Good morning and welcome to the Thoro News Paper Analysis for 13th October 2022. Now for today we have the article, The Court and Its Problem with the Collegium, which has been taken from the Hindu editorial. Now as you are aware, the Collegium is responsible for the appointments of judges in the Supreme Court. And today's article discusses certain facets of the Collegium which have caused it to be an inconvenience in carrying out its administrative capabilities. Following that, we will have the news update and the legal news, which you know are a part of Law Seco's initiative. So the editorial article for today, the court and its problem with the Collegium. Now, the Collegium of the Supreme Court is again in the spotlight of the public and it is being criticized for being in the same for all the wrong reasons. Now, as we know, Justice UU Lalit was brought in as the Chief Justice of India and his tenure was a rather short one. But in this short tenure, he has set a precedence for a scorching pace to resolve some of the most pressing issues that had been set aside by the other chief justices of India. And one of these pressing issues was the vacancy, the vacancy of four judges in the Supreme Court. So now where does the issue lie with this proactive approach to fill in the vacancy of the Supreme Court? Now, Justice Chandrachur and Justice Nazir have held back their affirmations on the new judges who are to be brought in to fill the vacancies in Supreme Court. So if we were to understand the implications of the same, we will have to go back to why this has happened. Now, what happened is it is the collegium, which is, again, spearheaded, spearheaded by the Chief Justice of India that appoints judges to the Supreme Court. Now, it was decided that the collegium will come together and then decide upon the pool of candidates that they have selected for the vacancies. But it was seen that Justice Chandrachur had caught late into the night and therefore he could not attend the meeting of the collegium. And the meeting of the collegium cannot proceed if all the members of the same are not together. This is why Justice UU Lalit went forward and circulated he passed around a circular which basically asked for the affirmations of the judges with regard to the candidate and if the same could be brought in or could be elevated as the judge of the Supreme Court. Now, when the said circular was passed around, Justice Chandrachur and Justice Nazir did not give their affirmations on the pool of candidates who were to be brought in as uh, who were to be elevated to the position of a Supreme Court judge. And this was not because they were not satisfied with the candidates. They have affirmed the candidates, but they are uh, they did they, they do not agree to the manner of circulation, and they have disapproved of the scene. Now, in the meantime, there is also a letter from the law minister of the country asking the chief justice of India's view on the appointment of his successor. Now, as we sit today, we do know that Justice D Y Chandrachur is going to be the next chief justice of India. The question that arises from here is that the Supreme Court and all the courts of India have resorted to online meetings in order to effectuate swift and steady justice. So in the matter, in the like in a very pressing matter of vacancy of Supreme Court judges, why does the Collegium not resort to online meetings to finalize on the candidates who are to be elevated? And if there are no complaints regarding the candidacy of the pool of candidates, why is an appointment not being made? Now, time and again, this it has been widely commented that this is an extra constitutional or non-constitutional body, the collegium, and this is enforced by judgments of the Supreme Court, which virtually rests the power of appointment of judges into the hands of this collegium. And how it operates, again, basically derives all its powers and functions from the judgments given by the Supreme Court and is sometimes therefore difficult to navigate. And as we discuss upon this article, we do hope that this, the vacancies in the Supreme Court will soon be filled. So with that, we move on to the news updates for today. Firstly, we have Power Grid acquires ETL under TBCV route. Now, Power Grid Corporation of India Limited has acquired ERNER Transmission Limited, which 
is better known as ETL and the project special purpose vehicle to establish interstate transmission system for system strengthening scheme for eastern and northeastern regions on build own operate and transfer or boot basis from the bid process coordinator REC power development and consultancy limited or REC PDCL secondly we have china launches asos satellite to study the sun and space weather ASOS is planned to operate at 720 kilometers 447 miles above earth surface in a sun synchronous orbit that will allow it to observe the sun at all times its primary four year mission is time to take most of the 2024 2025 solar maximum when the sun is at its most active during its 11 year cycle 11 year cycle third we have the world university rankings by the times now the indian institute of science iisc bangalore has retained the top position among indian institutes in the latest round of times higher education the rankings which has been boycotted by most of the indian institutes of technology that is the iits for the third consecutive year and this is because of the transparency concerns regarding these rankings Fourth, we have the Indian Deaf Cricket Team beats South Africa to win DICC T20 Champions Trophy. The Indian Cricket Team, for the hearing impaired, lifted the DICC T20 Championship 2022 trophy by defeating South Africa in the summit game at the Malik Stadium in UAE's Ajman. The men in blue outclassed the Proteas in each department to secure a well-deserved 39-run victory in the final. for the legal updates today we have firstly no person should be prosecuted under section 66a of the information technology act now as you know the supreme court had previously in the 2015 shreya singhal case held that the 66a of information technology act 2000 was unconstitutional and the supreme court in the case of people's union for civil liberties versus the union of india directed that no one should be prosecuted under section 66a of the information technology act 2000 which was struck down as unconstitutional by the court in the 2015 shreya singhal case and further the supreme court has come forward with a slew of directions so that if any individual or group are being sued under 66a of it act the set cases would be and the set charges would be dropped against them secondly we have abetment of suicide acts of accused must be proximate to occurrence for conviction under section 306 of ipc now the supreme court in the case of mariano anto bruno versus the inspector of police has reiterated that positive action proximate to the time of the suicide on the part of the accused which led or compelled the deceased to commit suicide should be established for conviction under section 306 of the indian penal code So this is all for today. For free study materials and TNA PDF slides, please join our Telegram channel. The link of which you can find in the description given below, or you can always scan the barcode that is given on your screen. For any further information, please feel free to visit www.lawseeker.com. Thank you.